What is up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I am a top player in the game of risk global domination. I have a daily release schedule on YouTube and I stream on Twitch almost as often. You can check my page for the upcoming schedule. If you are interested in getting better at the game for risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. For today's episode, we're going to be doing a refresher course on Progressive World Dom on the classic map. This game will be for the beginner to intermediate um, skill level, but uh, I'm sure it is always nice to review your skills settings for this game. We are playing World Domination on Classic Auto Setup, 60 second turn, Expert AI, and we start with one, the yellow player, progressive cards, balance blitz dice, uh, no filtering of players, no allies, no fog, no blizzards, no portals, and the bot activity is automated. So yellow bot will be taking cards. I like to put in an automated bot in progressive because I do want to see it continue to take cards. So red put in Australia. I can double down. I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to have more occupation in that position just because there's always a high risk to Australia being black's going to move through that three I shouldn't add to that either there's always a high risk of Australia getting popped it, this all depends on what black does I think I'm going to go up there but I don't love it so I'm going to get my card in Australia I now have a three stack I'm going to pull my two in Brazil into my other two so we have a central position in in uh, Africa we have an Australian position we have an Asian position we have a North American position now we get to see <laughs> the stupid shit so uh purple bombs a 5v3 and gets a good roll so purple is bad at the game which is a good thing to learn but I lost essentially four troops in the first position, we have General Arakara, one four six six four, playing as red and flying the flag of the United States of America. I'm in the second position. In position three, we have Purple, General Upal, one four seven eight nine, from Slovenia, who's obviously very bad at risk. In the fourth position, we have Captain Midas from Sweden, playing as blue, um, and he takes the South America bonus on the first turn. In the fifth position, we have an expert AI playing as yellow, and in the final position, we have Emmett the Despot from Malta, playing as black. And let's see what the black player does. So right off the bat, I'm down to 17 troops. This sucks. This opener really sucks. I am still in four positions. I'm probably going to lose one, so I have to figure out which one of my four positions is sunk. I have to try and predict what my opponents want. So this is what you pay attention to in the early game of World Dawn Progressive. How many positions are going to survive until the late game for you to make kills with them? That's the question. How many places am I in? How many places will my opponents allow me to be in? I can move the stack down and get out of Black's way. I'm not expecting the Australia position to survive. Black card skips on his first turn. All right, that is... Straight, yeah, so this is going to die too, which is why I didn't add to the Australia. Red's looking to take Australia. So we have the red player and the blue player playing it like it's fixed. At least red is taking cards. Okay. So given this information, I'm expecting this to be lost. So I'm going to get my card off of Quebec. And then I have a line to move this five stack into you, Madagascar, in a future turn. So we'll be with three five stacks. And we're going to be expecting to lose these four troops in Australia. So while it looks like I have 20, I actually only really have 16 troops because I'm expecting ready to bomb that. Purple's. Ooh, and I get a Joker. That's helpful. Okay, so uh, the review for folks, what is the difference between progressive and fixed? It is the card. So the card bonuses increase in progressive or they progress. Uh, funny name. First set is four, uh, four, then six, then eight, then 10, then 12, then 15, and then up by five, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So 
Um, if all things were equal, you're forced to trade on five cards. I'm sitting on the six trade and then the 25. But all things are not equal because black skipped. Why would you skip a card on your first turn? We don't know. He's throwing a wrinkle. He's throwing a, a wrench into the machinery of progressive world. Dog Let's see if he skips again, because I heard tell of players trying to pull this nonsense. They just delay the card sequence. All right. So we have a bot taking over most of North America. Okay. Does black skip again? No. It's just a single turn card skip. Okay. So black puts himself at the end of the trading sequence, but he already is at the end of the trading sequence. Not entirely sure of this move. Okay, so I have a prefer, and this is where I lose my Australia position. Turn three begins, red puts in a 12 stack, cleans out the Australia bonus. Not yet, tries to get value out of his twos. Okay, hits a 3v2 and wins. Very low odds. You kind of want to do that in uh, manual rule. Okay, by some miracle, I have not lost that position. So I'm going to strengthen my other three and move out of the way. So this is one of my favorite hiding places on the board is Madagascar. I have a five stack in Madagascar, six in Quebec, a six in China. I'm out of everyone's way and I'll be able to sweep up through the rest of Africa, but people don't need to move through me to make kills. Uh, the preferred positioning theory in the early game for classic progressive is you want to be in Madagascar, Japan, and Central Canada. And these three positions, one, two, and three, are out of everyone's way. So they're the least offensive positions if you are going for a three-position strategy. Um, blue is being allowed to hold South America, so blue is going to get quite strong. But they aren't in an exterior. So when and if red decides to take Australia, blue will only be in those two positions. Ah, oh, he's going to start working on Africa too. That's not ideal for me. But I think he's guarding. He pulls that inside. Yeah. Blue is playing it like it's a fixed game. So blue has an eight stack interior to himself. He's not going to be able to take cards off of this. He's also not going to be able to make kills with it. I always recommend you don't really lock your stacks, but we're still in the early game. So the early game in Progressive is the first four or five cards, then the mid game is the first trade, and the late game is when the kills start coming down. So I'm doing all right at 22 troops. Red is in three positions. They have less troops than me. Blacks takes Europe? No. Black moves into Asia. Okay. Europe is totally open and available. And we move on to the fourth turn. All right, we have 15 stacked. Now we see it. Now we see it. Yes. Okay, so I lose four troops in Australia, which is why I didn't add any value to that position. Red takes it on the fourth turn. Red, myself, and magenta or and uh, purple are in the teens. I have a lucky lucky set on three. What do I do here? I think if I cut into South Africa, that at least forces blue. If blue wants to take a card on this front, he can take a card on East Africa, and then that that opens the stack back up. I'm kind of just hiding, right? I'm trying to hide out of everyone's way as much as possible, and I'm in very close to my three preferred positions. So this is fine right now. We're happy with this situation. Sitting on four cards, got 20 troops in three different locations. And what is the reason you want multiple locations? Well, it's hard for your opponents to make kills if they have to move through other opponents. The reason you're paying so much attention to who can kill you is that is the way 
these games tend to go. It is a predatory type of mode where you kill players, take their cards, and trade sets in, in turn. Uh, purple is manual rolling for no reason. Purple sitting at 19 troops in three positions. I have okay line on them. If the time is right, I might be able to finagle a kill on purple. That time might be next turn, but it would be too early because this set would only be the 8. Destroy 19 troops for 8 is bad value. Blue decides not to open me. That's fine. I don't need them to. And he puts a ton of troops facing the other direction. So Blue and I are actually dealing with each other quite nicely. Does the bot roll 6v5? No. Okay, purple down to 18. Down to 17. I want the stack here. I don't want the stack inside of what is now mostly a bot continent. And the black player has most of his material in Asia. I think it might be wise to move the six out of black's way so black can consolidate. Maybe he moves through his one and sits with a big ass stack in India or other way in Ural. No, he adds to North America, gets a card in Greenland. Okay, now what? Okay, he does consolidate. In where? India? Okay, cool. So the leaders in this game are blue and black. Black card skipped. Oh, red trades. Okay, red, seeing as how they're on the first seat, they trade. Do they hit purple's eight? Doesn't look like they do. They probably get a card up here. And then the rest go on the nine, right? Yeah, yeah. Attack up, move the three in. You have an impenetrable Australia. Good for you, sir. You are also playing a fixed game. So we can see the blue and red are playing uh, a fixed game when we're actually playing progressive. What I mean by that is they're paying a ton of attention to the positioning and to their bonuses. So onboard bonuses are um, a lot more of a short-term thing in progressive, right? They only matter in the early turn. So blue getting it on the first turn would be good, but look, they're still the same number of troops as black. So depending on the map, of course, I don't tend to focus too much on the bonuses. I tend to focus on my positioning and how I can line myself up to make a kill. So I'm reasonably well lined up to kill purple. Black kind of blocked. Do I have a set without my joker? I do. So here's the other thing. Got a joker on the second card, which means I get a guaranteed trade with any other two. So I have three cannons, which will trade me in for my six. And then I'll have the joker follow up in the second round. So I'll get the 25 on turn seven. Okay, purple sets. <laughs> Slams into Australia. Wow. Wow. Okay, so blue, purple, and red are not very good. And, and I, I'm not saying not very good to denigrate the players, right? They just fundamentally misunderstand the mode we're playing, right? You see how I'm preserving all my troops. I'm sitting at uh, 23 in three positions. I'm really hard for any one player to kill. Black could do it. Does blue continue to lock themselves? Just get an easy card and pass, right? No. Blue moves out. Okay. Blue says, get the fuck out of my face. Which I will do. Let's see. Who can we kill? Red only has two cards. I don't actually have the troops to kill red yet. So I'm going to add to my 6 echo 1, 2, and this gets me out of Blue's way. What I expect is Blue's way. Black takes Australia? That potentially feeds me red. No. He guards the Australia. He guards both kills. Purple and red. That's a great, great move by Black. All right, pay attention to this, guys. So, red is going to give up 
Black's Monopoly on purple. Purple is now in two positions with 11 troops. It's close. I can't quite kill them profitably, so I'm not going to hit them at all. I'm also not going to automatically force in my Joker. That's a flaw in the game that needs to be fixed. You should always default to putting in a set without a Joker if you were designing a game. So I'm going to equally strengthen all three of my positions. So 11, I'm going to put three, we're going to put three, and then because I have to make two attacks off the six, because I want to be out of blue's way. I don't want blue to slam into me for any reason other than trying to make it looks like they want Africa. I'm going to give them Africa. I'm not going to be in their way. I'm going to move out. I bet you he sees that as a friendly move. His focus is I want to take another bonus because that's how I'm going to win the game. And I say, sure, sir, you please feel free to take Africa. Purple, now I have great lines on purple. They take their third card. I'll be able to kill them next turn off my Joker. And bot actually didn't set until five cards, which is rare. I hope I don't lose this 10, but it's possible. Also, the bot is likely going to hit this five, which means red is looking nice and juicy. Lots of ways this cookie can still crumble. I think blue takes Africa. Blue sets gets the 10. Just don't hit my nine, bro. Russ goes on the three, and he goes like this. Ah, don't just don't hit my nine, please. Blue doesn't even take Africa; just takes an easy card. Cool. This situation is ideal for me as long as they don't hit me, because he is locking up a piece of the board that I don't have to worry about, and that concentrates everyone into a smaller space, making the kills easier. Bot sets in, gets the 12. Where does it go? Hits red's five. Rough times for red. Black can kill red. And, and I think they will. Yeah. My 10's next. Rough times for red. Okay. Black kills red, gets the... 15 to do it. Yes, Black Sets gets the 15, kills Red, sits on five cards. Ooh, how many troops will they have after they kill Red? Too many. My line is to kill Purple, I think. Or does he go for both? He goes for both. This is extremely dangerous. Black player gets both kills. Okay, that doesn't trigger a set. But he will kill red, which will trigger a set. And that will give him... Oh no, it looks like he runs out of time because he's too... Slow, he feeds me the kill on red, baby. <laughs> I get fucked. <laughs> hope he doesn't have a set. I want four cards. Ooh, I hope red doesn't have a set. Give me that feed. Can I kill black too and trade again? I think I can. Hmm. Red skips. Doesn't give me the fourth card. Doesn't matter. I'm still going to kill you, sir. Still going to kill you, sir. Okay. I think I can kill black. It's a bit tricky. Just shy of the troops to kill the black player. Move out of the bot continent. 
just in case the bot has a set on three. I'm gonna move my stack all the way up out of Black's way as much as possible. Black is gonna set, so he will get the 25, but I am sitting on another set, so as long as I don't die, we can make another kill. So we've moved from the uh, mid game into the late game. Black kills purple, I kill red. I'm sitting on the 25, 30, 35 trade. What is it? No, I'm sitting on the 30 trade. Okay. Black will get the 25. Blue continues to play it like it's fixed. Don't pop my nine, please. That would be a feed. Okay. And stacks. Cool. Big ass stack. Open. Bot sets gets the 25, which means black gets the 30. I think I could die from that. Fuck. I think I'm dead. Black kills me. Takes four cards. He's slow, though. I knew the bot was going to do this, which is why I moved out of the bot's continent. Bot breaks blue. Now, black has to figure out how to kill me on his turn. If he misses, there's still a chance. He's going to set. No, he doesn't. No, he, he is going to set. He's sitting on five. He has to set. 30. Okay. Where does the 30 troops go? 14 v 8. He is lining himself up to kill me. Fuck. I don't want to get fourth. That sucks. You don't have enough time now. He's going to run out of time. He's going to feed this kill. Just too slow. He isn't even going to run out of time. He's going to run out of troops. He can't get to my 21. All right, so how do I recover? How do I recover from this? This doesn't make any sense, this play. You're slamming into me, but I have a 21 stack. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Well, I mean, he tried to kill me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Eat my fucking asshole. Um, <laughs> Don't think blue can beat the red bot. Or uh, the yellow bot. the speed. I'm going to hide for a turn and see what happens. I know I normally recommend not locking your stack. Blue's going to hit me hard. Yeah. Blue's going to hit me hard. It's not looking good, guys. I don't know why Black decided to try and fail to kill me, but he tried and, tried and failed to kill Red as well. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. Sitting on five cards, Blue is going to run out of time. Thankfully. Maybe not. Maybe he's got me just enough time. Trying to distract him with emotes. Doesn't quite have me. Two. One. Oh, baby! He got me. Oh, ho, 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 ho. got me right in the nick of time. I get second place. Okay. So, the lesson from this game is... I mean... I tried not to show Black that I had the speed advantage until it was too late. Black fed two kills this game. He fed my own, he fed me reds. I don't know how well you can predict that. So there isn't much of a lesson there. Um, you saw how I tried to predict the situation and, and play off of it as best as I could. I'm reasonably happy with second place this game. So the bot doesn't count as a player because this bot started as a bot. So I got second place this game. Right, it was a five-player game with one AI. 
even though the AI was automated, so it keeps taking cards. And the reason I set that up is so that it continues to progress the card sequence in progressive. I'm going to wait and see Blue clean up this game, just because I'm curious to see the ranks of all of my opponents. Generally pretty happy with that. Um, progressive World Dom is a shit show. We saw Blue and Red play it like it's fixed. I would imagine Blue is a beginner. I would imagine... Black is even worse. A beginner or novice. Who played well this game? Red is a beginner. Um, purple is a beginner. Yeah, there aren't there there likely isn't a single intermediate in this game. And there you go. Okay. Let's see the rank points. Okay, Blue's an expert. Well, for an expert, in case you catch this video, Captain Midas, turn off your camera animations in settings. Um, SMG has decided to give a speed handicap to new players in their infinite wisdom, so don't do that. But yeah, we saw very obvious beginner plays by um, Purple, Red, and Black, and Blue moving his stack out when it was relevant for him to do so, was correct. So Blue did play the best, and there we are. He took it down. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of it fun and entertaining, maybe even a little bit educational and informative. If you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. I have a daily release on YouTube, and I stream on Twitch almost as often. You can check my page for the upcoming schedule. Um, I am working hard to help bring Risk into its destiny. If you are interested in supporting me on that mission, there are a number of ways. You can join my Patreon. You can join my Discord, get notifications for when I go live on Twitch, catch the next stream. And more recently, you can become a member of my YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.